I'm Amy and this is A Star Reads and it is time for a Sunday sum up. <sighs> it's been a long week, <laughs> a very, very long week. And that's not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> I'm doing this early actually, it's Friday, my first day off this week. And I'm really happy that I'm getting a chance to do this because I was a little afraid that I'd be working seven days and work has gotten crazy. So field work has taken off with a bang. It really has. And usually our projects are a bit smaller and I spend a lot of the time doing turbidity monitoring or helping deep fish like one day a week or something. Whereas in this project, it's a really big one. And since we've been out there, we've been to fishing every single day. And so we're basically busy the whole time. And you'll see, I've gotten a lot of sun. <laughs> Look at my farmer's hand. <laughs> I've gotten a lot of sun. My face, my face always looks dirty when I get a lot of sun. We've just been out in the heat, in the sun, working constantly the whole time we've been out there. And I've been putting in anywhere from nine to 12 hour days. So I'm tired, <laughs> I'm very tired. And I kind of hit my limit yesterday and I had homework to do today. So that's why they're like, yeah, yeah, take off Friday. But I might have to work this weekend. So I wanted to make sure I got my Sunday sum up done so I could get that posted for you for Sunday. And also I'm currently doing the Squash That Series readathon, which is a four day readathon hosted by Kayla from Kayla Ray Reads and Bailey from Is Bailey Reading. I will link everything you need to know about that readathon down below. I'm having a lot of fun with it. And it's basically Squash That Series is all about finishing series that you need to finish. So I am working on some series. I'm not stressing about it too much. I'm doing a vlog for it, but I don't know how much actual reading content I'll have for it because I have just been working so much and I'm not getting as much time while I'm out in the field to read as I have had in prior years. So <laughs> it's exhausting, but it's fine. You know, it's good for making some money to hold me over during the school year. And that's, uh, that's all I can say for it. So I've got two books to review for you this week. And then I'm going to tell you where I'm at with my reading. So on July 19th, I finished A Song for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. This one took me a while to get through because I had started reading it at a time when I shouldn't have been reading. And then I just got really busy and this month has been crazy so far. So I'm really excited to have read this book though. It's very short, it's a novella. Honestly, especially at the end, it was like therapy. It was, it was saying all the things I needed to hear. And it was fantastic. I'm giving it a 4.25 stars because there were elements to it that I thought were amazing. And I thought I loved the characters. It took a little time to get as invested in sibling decks, but really absolutely loved Moss Cap. Beautifully written, very atmospheric. The climax of the story and the intention behind the writing was fantastic and that was exactly what I needed but I felt like it took a little time to get there or maybe I would have liked a little more of that. The message behind the story which felt very important to me because it was something that touched very strongly on things that I I struggle with and so like I almost wanted more of that you know I wanted more of that conversation and I felt like we got a lot more of the build-up which was nice and it gave us a really lovely, cozy setting and story, but I really wanted a little more depth to the conversation she was having because it meant so much to me. So like, it was really, really good, 4.25, but there was this like, I just wanted a little bit more from it. But ultimately it was really well written. It was really beautiful. It's about this character, this tea monk named Sibling Dex, who, is struggling with their life because they have everything they could possibly want. Their life is really going really well, but they're still having a hard time finding satisfaction in it. They have this idea that if they are able to find crickets and listen to cricket song, they will be able to enjoy their life more 
and kind of find the meaning and purpose behind their lives. And so it's sort of an adventure to go find that. But this is a sci-fi and it's set in this world. I don't remember what it's called. It's like, it's actually set like on a moon, I think. And the robots in this world have actually gone off into the wild and are separate from the humans because they were given the choice to have their freedom and they chose to live in the wild away from humans. I wouldn't say this is like a very quick read because even though it's a novella, there's a lot of description and it's very relaxing to read. Probably be a good vacation read because it's very pleasant, but there are some profound conversations in it. So I would say that, I mean, it did make me cry a bit because it made me think of some of the things that I struggle with. I really enjoyed it. I recommend it. I'm looking forward to the next one, which I think is already out. So I'm hoping to get my hands on that so I can see how this story progresses. <laughs> So on July 20th, I finished my fifth book of the month. So, you know, not making the quickest progress, but I'm in the middle of a lot of books. And that was A Good Marriage by Kimberly McCrape. This was an audiobook that I was listening to. It's an adult domestic legal thriller. I really enjoyed this a lot more than, not, not a lot more than I was expecting to, but like based on some of the reviews, I was like, hmm, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Somebody had recommended it to me as a good audiobook, and it's a really good audiobook. It's narrated by Sarah Zimmerman, Carissa Vacker, and George Newburn. So if you're looking for a mystery thriller that you'd like to listen to, I recommend this. And honestly, I, I gotta tell you, I've been enjoying listening to thrillers a lot. So that's a good way to go, I think, when it comes to a lot of these thrillers, because it seems to be the type of audiobook right now that I'm enjoying the most is thriller audiobooks. I don't know why, but for some reason they're usually well narrated and I think that it builds up the suspense a little bit more for me. But it's about this woman named Lizzie and she is a lawyer. She's currently working as a defense lawyer for like white collar crimes and she's working for this big firm, work that she had never planned on doing in the past. It's not along the lines of what she wanted to do with her life, but her husband is an alcoholic and has caused a lot of problems through an accident that he had that has put them into an extreme amount of debt. That's basically what's happening with Lizzie. And at one point she gets this phone call from a friend of hers from law school, who's in Rikers prison, who's at first accused of assaulting an officer. But the real reason he's in Rikers is because his wife was found murdered at the bottom of their staircase and they believe that he did it. So they didn't say that he did it, but the officers kind of like found a good reason to arrest him so that they could keep him in custody. And he's begging Lizzie to help him with getting out of Rikers for one and, you know, help him with his case because he says he did not kill his wife. So that's the general synopsis without giving anything away. There's a lot of pieces to this. It's not just like there's just one storyline that's very simplistic. There's a lot of elements to it. There's a lot of Lizzie's own story that comes into this. There's a lot of Zach and other people in his life stories that come into this. And so there's a lot of different factors, which I thought made this very interesting, made it a little more complex. There were elements to it that I kind of guessed, but I didn't necessarily guess why or how those came into being. So that still left a certain level of suspense for me. And I don't know, I really enjoyed it. I liked the characters. I liked the way the story went. I like domestic thrillers. I definitely like legal thrillers. And this one's not as heavily legal as some other legal thrillers I've read, but there's some elements to it in this. But I do think I like more domestic thrillers, which makes me want to pick up more. So if you have any recommendations, especially good audiobooks, of domestic thrillers or just thrillers in general that you thought the audiobook was really great. Let me know in the comment section down below. In case I didn't mention it, I think I mentioned it, but I'm not sure. I gave this a four star. So solid four star. I thought it was really good, really fun and very entertaining. And I am happy to have read it. I would read something else by Kimberly McCrate in the future.
So let's talk about what I'm actively reading right now. I am currently actively reading Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Stefan. I'm 87% of the way through that. I'm hoping to finish that today, actually. My review and all the comments I have on that will be in my Squash That series vlog. I'm also working my way through the four books that I need to read for the Magical Treehouse read-along that is being hosted by Martine from Just Martine and Kayla from Kayla Ray Reads. I'll link their information down below. And I have already read books one and two. And then I also need to read books three and four. And oh, actually, I'll give you a little quick review of those first two books here. I guess this is a four review <laughs> video. Okay, so book one in the Magic Treehouse series is Dinosaurs Before Dark. And this is about these two little kids, Jack and Annie, who happen upon a magic treehouse. And when they open a book and say they want to go somewhere, they end up being transported to that place. So in this first book, they travel back in time to when dinosaurs were present, and you get to follow them on their little adventure there. And it's really fun. This is a series that's really popular with a lot of people that are a little younger than me. Or just a little. <laughs> because I was like nine years old when this series started, which is actually appropriate for the age I was and the age range of this series, which it says ages six to nine. But I think, you know, because it was so new, I didn't really, you know, get into it at that time. So a lot of people that are a little bit younger than me really fell in love with this series. And I can see why, because it's a lot of fun and I could see a lot of really young children enjoying this. There were elements to it that I really liked. I liked that the main character does his own research within these books. And it also makes kids really excited to read more because you know of the adventures that they're finding within these books. And then I also really liked that he's like learning how to take notes and journal and stuff like that. There's there's aspects of this that I think are really good skills for children to have. And so I like that these books promote that. And then the second book was The Night at Dawn. So it's about an actual night and then of castles and stuff like that. And this one I really didn't enjoy as much as the first book. I would give this one three stars, whereas I'd probably give this one four stars. And it's hard to rate these books because they're little children's books and they're written for younger children, not like a uh, regular middle grade. And so I enjoyed it. I did think it was fun and it's fun to continue on this series and this story, but this one just wasn't as engaging to me. The story wasn't as interesting. And I'm gonna say three stars because it was fun, but not my favorite. And then that's pretty much it, no. I started listening to In an Absent Dream by Sean McGuire. This is the fourth book in the Wayward Children series. And that's also one that I started reading specifically for Squash That series. I'm listening to it on audiobook. So I'm about 30% of the way through that one, enjoying it so far, enjoying the audiobook. Even though I know some people have said that they prefer reading them physically, I've been enjoying the audiobooks. I haven't found that I'm liking them less because they're audiobooks. This one's not my favorite yet at this point of the Wayward Children's books that I have been reading, but I'm excited to continue on and listening to that and hopefully getting it done before the Squash That Series readathon is over. So that's where I'm at with my reading. As far as all my other reads, all the other things I had mentioned in my last video, I have not been able to make any progress on those. So hopefully I can this weekend, but it hasn't, like I haven't gotten any further on Braiding Sweetgrass. I haven't gotten any further on The Light Between Oceans. And I also haven't made it any further on Prince Caspian. So like those are books that I would like to get to. But at the moment, my reading has just been very, very, very limited. And I'm okay with that because I have been so exhausted all week. So I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to make it. So I had a really amazing surprise today when I went to the mailbox. And this came from my wonderful dear Magda. She said, happy second book tube anniversary. I'm so excited for you and your success. Love you and can't wait to see what's next. Woohoo! I didn't mention it in my last video, but on July 15th, I hit my second year anniversary. It's pretty incredible. It's pretty incredible that I've been on booktube for two years. And <laughs> this is the first couple of months that I've had such a hard time getting videos out. But typically I do much better than this. But I'm really excited where I've come, the people I've met through booktube, the amount of conversations I've had surrounding books, which is just such a favorite topic and I love talking about books. I've had such an amazing experience and thank you everyone. Thank you so much for being a part of my journey. It's like absolutely incredible. So Magda got me two books from this series that I had read the first book as an arc and I actually really enjoyed it. It's a middle grade series. I liked the first book. I wanted to pick up the second one. I haven't had a chance to pick it up. And she got me both books. And this is perfect because it'll be great for my class when I'm eventually teaching too. So these are like dual purpose books because I get to enjoy them for myself, but then share them with my students eventually. So the first one was Britfield and the Lost Crown by C.R. Stewart. And it's about this young boy named Tom who's this orphan in this 
an orphanage called Weatherly and he has a friend named Sarah who he's gotten to know at this orphanage. Some stuff starts happening and he's learning more about his past and he has like one clue that he finds out from like his files, files that are on him as a child that basically just says Britfield. I think he's gotten in trouble at the orphanage or the people that own the orphanage are bad people. They're really bad people. He and Sarah escape and go on this adventure to try to find information about his past and try to find out more about him while also I guess trying to expose the orphanage because they're such bad people that own it. it kind of reminds me of Annie a little bit and I love Danny, so I guess that makes sense that I would love this. And so this is the first book and it's set in London and yeah, you can see a little bit of the adventure they had there in the first book. And then there's the second book, which I haven't had a chance to read yet and I'm really excited to read it, is called Britfield and the Rise of the Lion. So this one looks like it's set in Paris. I can't wait to read the second one. I might reread the first one. Like these are pretty thick books but the writing is really big. So I might end up rereading the first one because it's been a while since I've read it before I read the second one. So thank you so much, Magda, for this amazing gift. This is perfect. I'm really excited about it. And I can't wait to share it with my students eventually as well. So let me know in the comment section down below, what has been your favorite book this week? What has really brought a smile to your face? I know that the weather has been really nice, especially in the US and it's been pretty hot in some places. So let me know if you haven't been reading what else you've been doing. What have you been having fun with? I have just been out in the field. That's all I've been doing. But I'm excited because tonight we're gonna go see a movie like outside, like an outdoor movie. Something that feels kind of summery and I'm really excited to get out and do it. So it's, it's interesting because during the summer it's hard. You wanna read but at the same time, you wanna be out enjoying the weather, especially when you're up in Washington where most of the year, the weather is kind of icky. So you don't really wanna be out in it very often. So when the sun does come out, you're like, oh, I gotta spend a lot of time in it. So I've been a little, not slumpy at all because I do wanna read, but at the same time, I, I wanna enjoy as much as the weather and the summer as I possibly can. So I feel like I've been really busy and not making as much content and not reading as much, but I'm trying not to feel bad about it because I'm enjoying myself. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see what happens during my Squash That series vlog, but also what happens next week when I hopefully continue some of these books and finish out the end of the month. I can't believe we're almost at the last week of July. That's kind of blowing me away, which means that I need to do my TBR. Oh, well, I hope you have a good week and I will see you later. Bye.